So I have a whole bunch of papers to shred, just stuff that's accumulated over the, the year. And I tend to put it in this bin that's for stuff to shred. Now I find it gets very tedious after a while, because most of it is like receipts, which sometimes have personal information on them. The last digits of my credit card number, there's an order ID. Somebody who knows what they're doing, they could potentially use this against you. So the best bet is to just shred them. The problem is you have so many of them, you have to put them in one by one by one. It gets kind of tedious. The problem with these consumer grade shredders is that they're not continuous feed, so you have to keep putting stuff on it for it to start again. There's basically a little plastic thing in it and once it gets activated, I can't fit my finger in here as lot as hard as I try, my finger is never gonna fit in here, so don't worry about that. I still probably shouldn't be putting my finger in there. But anyway, so there's a little plastic thing in there and that plastic thing will set it off. So when you have your receipts that are small and sometimes they're crumbled, it's kind of a pain to just push it in and they just don't go in probably. A problem with this particular shredder is that it actually broke apart. So this, the cover basically broke off and then you can see the insides. So like every time I try to move it, it's just, it's very flimsy because it broke. It's actually the plastic parts that broke. So like the screws are still in there, but the, the holders or whatever actually broke. So I was gonna epoxy it together and fix it. And then I realized how simple it is inside that while I'm in there, I may as well mod it. So why not give it a continuous feed? It's very simple, I just need to bypass the switch that the plastic thing, the little lever thing or whatever activates when you put the paper. So now when I turn it on, it'll just keep spinning. Now the motor is probably not rated for that. It's probably gonna overheat, but it's worth trying. It's just cheap shredder. I don't even remember how much I paid for it. It wasn't that much. I may as well put a bit more life into it. And if I feel that the motor is overheating, I can always add a fan or something. But honestly, I think I'll be fine. So let's get to it. All right, so here I got the shredder part. And it's unplugged. You should definitely unplug stuff like this before you work on it, especially something mechanical. It's one thing to get a shock, but if you actually activate something mechanical, you can really hurt yourself. So I'm just gonna let this dangle here. This comes off completely. Actually, it's easier to, it's actually easier to put it upside down. For good measure, I'm gonna put it off. It doesn't matter because it's unplugged. All right. Now here you can see the underside of the shredder, which, I'm not an expert at this stuff, but it looks like it's probably like cast iron. Might be machined a little bit, I don't know. It's pretty sharp, like it looks decent. It's like if, if you get a cheap shredder like this and it breaks, chances are it's not the actual shredding part that's a problem. It's probably something else. Like in this case, it's a plastic. So most people would actually just throw it its way. So see, like this is where the screws are in and it's actually like, it, everything just broke. Like it, it breaks in my hands. So I don't know if it's like cheap plastic or whatever, I mean, it probably is. This looks like a ABS V0, that's what it says on the markings there. It's probably not fiber reinforced. AVE actually knows this stuff way better than I do. I'm trying to pretend I'm AVE here and I'm not AVE. He knows way more than this kind of stuff. Yeah, so anyway, so there's a date code as well. It's 10 month, 2007. This seems about right, because I've had this shredder for quite a while now. That's yeah, so a brand name is Aurora. Bottle number WMC880X. And it uses 2.2 amps. So decent motor in there. So what's going on here is pretty simple. We have the power coming in. And let's see here. So there's a wire and a follow it. It goes to the little circuit board. I don't really think that circuit board does much. Like it's not even worth taking apart. You know what? I will take it apart. May as well. It's only two screws. Don't turn it on. Take it apart. 
All right. I actually did turn it on, so I kind of broke that rule. Also, at some point, I want to experiment with like a better camera mounting solution because it would be nice to get like a instead of a side view, it'd be nice to get like an overhead view. But I don't really have a physical way of mounting a camera that way. But eventually, I do want to look into that. So it would be fun to do make more of these videos where I just take stuff apart. I know I like watching them, so Let's see if the circuit board comes out. I kind of like the way this is made, actually. Like everything is pretty simple to work on. Like it's too bad that these things break sometimes and people just throw it out. When really it's not like sometimes they're actually made easy to fix. Now in this case the plastic broke on this thing, so yeah, I guess to fix it, like yeah, that's a different thing. But like as far as the mechanical parts, like it's not that bad. Okay, so oh interesting, okay. So we got a fuse on here. We got a switch. I'm not sure what the switch does. I'm almost wondering if it's some kind of... Oh! I'm an idiot. It's a switch on the front. Okay, this is all this is and it's just gonna... It's, this is a front switch. So like, you can control to put it on or to put it in reverse. That's that's what the switch is for. Yeah. I was gonna say it was like to select between, you know, 120 or 240 and I was trying to figure out how that would work because there's no transformer. No. It's just a switch in the front. Yeah, and there, there is a fuse, so... Yeah, so anyway, so the power comes in through here. And then it comes in here. And this is just a jumper. And then it goes to the yellow, which goes to the motor. Interesting. I'm not gonna actually reverse engineer the whole thing. It's a little bit more involved than I thought. I mean, it's not that complicated, but I don't know a lot about my electric motors. There's different kinds like universal induction and all that. This is probably like a universal motor, but I could be wrong. But yeah, so basically this is what's going on. So the, the green would be like the center polarity. And then this probably switches out the coils completely. Okay, I see. Okay, so yeah, so this part is probably the hot goes to the motor. Then the neutral comes here to a switch. That's right. This is actually what I was looking for. I wasn't even planning on trying to reverse engineer anything. But the main thing I want to show is that this comes to a switch. So this is just a safety. So when you put the cover on the little bucket thing, it'll turn it on. When this thing is not on the bucket thing, it's not going to work. And I'm going to keep this part. This part is fine. It's, it's a good safety to have. So I'm going to put this circuit board back. Yeah, so basically what we have is the power comes in and the first thing it hits is a switch which is a safety and then that switch goes back to the circuit board and the circuit board has a switch that basically controls the, the direction so the switch will either turn it off, put it in reverse or put it forward and it'll do that by switching different coils of the motor. That is basically my guess without spending more time to actually reverse engineering it. But then there's also another thing for when it's in the forward position now reverse works all the time. It's set up so that if you put it in reverse it'll just keep going but when you put it in forward, like a normal operation, there's actually, it goes through a different switch, which is right here. Now that switch is actuated by the plastic switch that's in the shredder that gets activated when you put a piece of paper. I can technically plug this in and show you this. Now if I activate this, this is like putting a piece of paper and it would activate. Now because this is not sitting on the bucket, it won't go on. Now if it was sitting on the bucket, this would be activated. And now if I hit this, it should go on. Yeah, so you kind of, maybe I'll do that a bit better. Yeah, so you see it's on as long as these two switches are on. These switches are basically in series. like. Actually, I think they actually are because this goes back to the circuit board and that, that goes. So basically, these two switches are in series. So as long as those two are activated, as long as those two get activated, it will go on. So we'll go ahead and unplug this again. Okay, so now what I want to do in this video is simple. I simply want to bypass the switch completely. So now when I put it to auto, it'll actually basically be on all the time. Basically, the simplest way of doing this is I could probably just splice these two wires together. 
And l seriously, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a wire nut. I mean, I could solder them together and shrink wrap and all that, but... And I actually kind of want that switch. It might be useful for something else. Oh. Oh, I just discovered something interesting. So while the shredder is running, it almost looks like there's something that keeps it... I guess it just makes sure that it stays on for long enough during a shred. Oh, that's exactly what it is. That's, uh, that's actually kind of smart. Okay, so on this gear here, there's actually a little... I don't know what you would actually call that, but it's basically a, a cam, I guess. I think that's, actually, that's a, actually I think that's the name for it. So what will happen is it'll keep the switch depressed just for maybe one cycle. That way when a piece of paper is passed, a plastic switch that activates this, it'll still keep running for a bit. So that's actually kind of smart. So if I really wanted to, I could probably just put something around here to keep the switch on and that would work. I could literally put like a rubber band here and I would be done. But that's, I don't know, that feels kind of cheap. I want to actually fix it electrically. So I'm going to go ahead and actually unscrew this. So I think all this lifts out. I really like how they made this like serviceable. Like you don't see stuff designed this way very often. They normally try to make it as hard as possible to service it. So yeah, I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, this is great. Like, I need to make sure this actually lands right. I could actually get rid of this plastic thing here. So that is basically the mechanic mechanism that when you put the paper in, it would activate the thing. So I'm just gonna take that out. Yeah, I don't think that was holding anything, so I should be fine. I mean, for a consumer product, this is decent, I think. Like, I don't have that much experience taking stuff apart, but I'm almost tempted to just put that screw back in there. Doesn't matter, but it's either gonna stay in here or end up in the jug drawer or in the trash. So if by chance I ever decide to change it, it's there. Because what are you gonna do with one screw like that, right? So you may as well just keep it in there. Okay, so yeah, this, so this is soldered on. So I'm just gonna cut those wires. Is this unplugged? Yes. Yeah, so I'm just strip these and just wire them, wire and nut them together. I have wire strippers, but I can't find them right now. So this will do. One of the things I can't wait to do is to build my shop because I want to be able to have all my tools nicely organized all in one spot. The problem with having them like not having a designated area is that some of them are in the shed, some of them are in the garage, some of them are here, some of them are they're all over the place. So once I have a shop, this this sort of stuff I'll actually do in the shop. So like I'll always have my tools at my fingertips. But for now, I'm just gonna keep running around after them until they're all in one place. All right, so let's make sure I didn't nick any wires here. Now I'm tempted to just solder them, but my soldering, I'd have to move this to the soldering station. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a wire nut. It'll do. Okay, right, so I got a wire nut. Found a pretty nice small one. This is pretty thin gauge wire, so you don't need a big one. Now, if I really want to, I can actually put a thermal switch on here or a thermal fuse and put it right where the motor is, but I'm not gonna bother and it might even already have one. Yeah, I think there actually is one. Yeah, so I don't need one. Now, now I'm thinking about it, I probably should have soldered this just because the vibration might make it come loose over time. But I think it'll be fine. All right, so this is pretty much ready to go. Now, like I, now, like I mentioned a while ago, the case is kind of broken. So, so I still need to figure out a way to fix that. I might just epoxy it, but if I epoxy it, then it's pretty much gonna be closed forever. And if I do that, maybe I should solder those wires. 
Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna. I should do this properly. I'm actually gonna solder those wires. I'm just gonna do that off camera because I don't want to move my whole rig. Yeah, I'm gonna solder that and come back. All right, so this is soldered and shrink wrapped. Yeah, I'm just gonna feel better about that connection. I was trying to be lazy here and I decided it was a bad idea, especially for something with vibration. I mean, it probably would have been fine, but just to be safe. All right, so I'm just gonna shove that in here somewhere. All right. So this is pretty much ready to go. So. So if I go ahead and plug it in and I turn it on, on auto, it's not going to go, of course, but there's a little switch. So if I activate that switch with something, it should actually go. So there you have it. I have it in continuous operation. So now I just need to figure out the best way to to seal this cover back up so that it actually stays in one piece. Now there's different ways I can do this if I want to be able to open it again. But I think the simplest is to just put some epoxy just around and it'll hopefully keep it in. It'll hopefully be in good enough. What I'll do is I'll make it so that I only have a couple dabs and if I do want to open it, I can probably just break the epoxy. Another solution is flex tape. That would probably actually work. Yeah, so I've put a bit of epoxy and like I'm not even gonna clean the surface. It doesn't have to be super strong, it just needs to be strong enough. Like I mean, even hot glue would definitely work. And I know what, since I have the epoxy, I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. Yeah, so I'm taking a little dab of epoxy here and one at the other end. And I think that should do. And it's gonna be easy enough to break it if ever I need to get back in. And if I really want to fix this properly, I can figure out a way to put some more screws in. Like fix the mounts inside, but I'm not gonna bother. So this is the epoxy I'll be using. It's a JB Weld Clearwell Quick Setting Epoxy. Mastic epoxy that please the rapid. Five minutes apparently. Now this stuff is not really a joke. You really don't want to get that on yourself, especially not on your eyes. Like I should technically be wearing safety glasses to use this stuff, but I'll be careful. I'm just gonna put a little bit on here. Oh this stuff smells. Okay, so that's more than enough. It's actually way more than I wanted. It's funny because usually like any kind of glue actually smells really good like and it seems the more dangerous it is the more good it smells, but this stuff actually really stinks. Phew, that's... Yeah, that's that's a potent smell. Whoa! Yeah, this is... Phew. Yeah, if you want to use a lot of this stuff, you really want like a well ventilated area. Okay, so I'm just gonna apply some schmoo over here. Yeah, this is way more than I actually anticipated using. Like I need to actually think really quick of something else around the house I don't want to fix because while I have it out, I may as well use it. Oh, wow, this smells pretty bad. I don't remember it being this bad last time I used it. The microphone on the camera that I'm using now, that's actually how it's mounted. Because the camera doesn't come with a horseshoe mount. I think I mentioned that in my review of the camera. So this is actually how I went around fixing it. You know what? I may as well just put more I mean if I really need to open it again I'm just gonna use a Dremel the stuff is actually pretty decent to work with like it like the consistency of it is just it's pretty decent it's almost like uh, it's almost like hot glue. 
so it's a bit forgiving like those seams are not quite touching and because of the the consistency of it it's still forgiving like it's kind of going to fill in the gap yeah i hope i never need to get this open because this will actually be very hard to open yeah so i'm just going to let this sit now it says five minutes but i think the cure time is actually longer do not breed fumes yeah I definitely don't want to breed those. It's potent. Use only in a well ventilated area. Yeah, I'm kind of not doing that. Maybe I should like, at the very least I'm gonna turn on the blower for the furnace. Oh, okay, I got the fan on. All right, so I'm just gonna let this sit. And meanwhile, I'm gonna try to think of something I need this for before it goes bad. But yeah, this is way more than I wanted to actually take out. All right, so this is the next day. As you can see, I have it assembled. So now it's actually all one piece. It's not, it's not falling apart. So that's, so the epoxy worked. And it feels pretty solid, so that's good. And it sits nicely. And now if I turn it on, it just keeps going. So now I can just continuously feed it. I don't have to keep shoving paper for it to start. I just press the button and it just goes. Works very well. Now a safety tip, if you're going to work with a shredder and you have long hair, you probably should tie it up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. There you go. I like to just do like a half ponytail kind of thing. I think it looks kind of cool. Anyway, back to shredding. Yeah, I must say this mod really makes it better. It's just it's so much better because it doesn't matter where I feed it. Before I used to always have to try to feed it in here and now it doesn't matter. Like it's just always on. And it doesn't seem to be getting too warm. I mean the furnace is on and the heat is right here so I am feeling a bit of heat. But it, yeah, so I think it'll be fine. But yeah, so if you have a paper shredder that has those, the little sensor that only goes on when you put the paper in and you want to change that, we'll open it up and it might actually be as simple as this one. Yeah, so this is it for this video and have yourself a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.